Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I had a great idea for a bird feeder, so I built one a few weeks ago, and it turned out so good that we decided to build another one. So we're gonna go back in time over a period of a couple different recordings. I hope you enjoy, I hope it's helpful for you. All right, so for today's video, here's the stuff we're gonna use. I'll start in no particular order, and by no means necessary, you guys have to use exactly what I'm using. This is just what I have at time of recording, and so we're gonna go with that. So we're gonna need a brad nailer, a saw, straight edge and pencil, a drill, and a few good drill bits. Today I'm using quarter inch, 7 30 seconds, and I'll probably end up using 3 30 seconds. No big deal. Again, you'll see later in the video where you could probably use any size you want. Um, the whole basis of this bird feeder tutorial is based around a canning jar. Cool thing about this design is you'll be able to use a pint or a quart size jar. Wide mouth is preferable. This is the base and the top of our bird feeder. These are just rough cut two by six material. Again, don't feel confined to that. Find whatever you have or go to your hardware store and get whatever you want. The rope that I'm using is paracord because again, that's what I have. And then a good quality rain and moisture proof spar varnish. That is uh, the important part. And I am using a two inch Forstner bit, a tape measure, and some safety glasses. At the end of the main structure of the bird feeder, we are personally going to build a roof. You don't have to. We like the look of it and also it's going to deflect a little bit of rain. So we'll cover that later. Um, we are using some cedar plywood because cedar is always a good idea. And we've cut these already at a 45 to make a nice little peak. All right, let's get started. We are going to cut the top and the bottom pieces of wood at exactly six inches. And we'll do that here. And then we're going to, just for fun, cut the tips off so it's not sharp edges at the bottom. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna try and find the center of my bird feeder to create pretty close kind of a bullseye look. So I know general area where to put my holes. Just kind of eyeball it, make it look like a good four quarters there. And this is gonna give me a good idea of where to put the Forzner bit for the seed cups. Just like that. Simple. So now we will clamp this down. All right, I've got my two inch Forzner bit here. I'm going down the depth of the bit itself. So just about one inch. So where my circle meets my crosshair here, is where I'm going to put each seed cup. All right, that's plenty deep enough, and I'm gonna do that three more times. So this one looks like that one. Okay, now we are going to create a hole that goes through the bottom and the top, and that will be where our paracord runs through. So I'll show you. I'm just going to come in approximately an inch, somewhere in there. I'll make sure I'm kind of even on all of them. Okay, so now what I want to do is line up the bottom with the top perfectly. So when I drill my holes to run the rope up through, they're perfectly in line. And I've got this board down here just to make sure I don't drill into our workbench. So that will look like this. 
now I've got these holes that line up. Maybe I'll do a quick mark right here. Check mark here so I know they line up with those. Go with those holes. Next is to mount the jar ring there with two tiny little screws and then we'll run the rope up through both of these pieces. All right, I'm just gonna pre-drill the metal canning jar lid here. Got some tiny little screws here that will do the job. Just get any tiny little screw here, that should work. Something that will pin down the lid. And when this is full of bird seed, you're not gonna screw this all the way down anyway. It'll rest on those, uh, the heads of those screws. Okay, so on my first bird feeder, I cut four pieces of rope to 30 inches. Um, it seemed to work out well, but on this, I'm going to experiment more with the taller jar. So instead of 30, I went with 36 inches. So now we're gonna burn all the ends and run it through our holes. All right, so I've run my rope up through the top and tied a quick knot so I don't lose it. I've got my check marks that I made so I know which hole lines up with what. So now I'm going to just go as low as possible and just tie a knot in the end of every one of these, create the bottom so that will not slip out and I'll show you real quick how it very quickly turns into a bird feeder. Turn it over, go like that, add our jar, and if you wanted to stop there you could just hang it in a tree like that. Get all the strings even, line it up the way you want, and that's pretty much the main idea for the bird feeder. We are going to get a little more fancy and create our roof, which will rest like this. So what we did with the roof, like I said, we cut a couple pieces of cedar plywood at a 45 degree angle. And now I'm just gonna use a little piece of wood to scab on there. One more here. And we'll get rid of these ends here. And real quick, I'll do the other side for you so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'll line up this side here and put a couple nails on this side. That lines up pretty well. All right, so there's our roof. Now the big project here is drilling holes in your roof at the perfect angle for this rope to go up through. Okay, so I think the best way to figure out where to put our roof holes is to take the top off of the jar and just kind of set it in here and get a idea of where we're at space-wise. about an inch and an eighth away from the edge of the roof on both sides here and just about two inches about two and an eighth away from the side of the roof there in some way whatever you can do maybe you've got someone helping you or if you have to do it by yourself some way figure out how to line up these holes to create marks where you're going to want to drill your holes through the roof. I just set this here and ran down through with a pencil and marked dot dot dot. That's where my drill bit's going to go four times. And I'm going to hold it so I can get a little bit of an angle to it. All right, we're going to run the paracord up through here. Just remember if you want to use a more rustic looking rope, 
uh, anything bigger, just use whatever size drill bit you find appropriate. The nice thing about the paracord, it does make for smaller holes. And this paracord is going to hold up for a long time. So let's see what we got. The cool thing is it's kind of floppy when you are filling the jar with birdseed, but once it pulls tight and hangs in the tree, everything just kind of lays on top of itself really nice and straight. So that's it. You've got a bird feeder, homemade bird feeder with a quart sized jar. And a couple weeks ago, I put together this one. This one's already got the spar varnish on it. It's been holding up well outside in the rain and stuff like that. Um, and the birds have been going crazy on it, hence the bird poop all over the place. But this has worked out really slick. This one is quite a bit different in design up top here just for the reason that I wanted to experiment with what I called a suet loft. So I got the nails to hold the roof off of the top, creating a little more open space for the birds. Tiny little tack there so the suet wouldn't slide off. I just run the suet in, push it down on that nail, and that was kind of popular for the chickadees and some of the other birds that love suet, but um, depends on the time of year. In the winter time, I think I'll put suet back in there, but as of right now, it wasn't getting eaten. So here, I've got a suet loft with some nails holding the roof up. And here, we're not gonna do a suet loft. So you can see the roof is sitting closer to the jar. You've got two different size options. You can see the two inch seed cups allow for plenty of space for the bird to stand and plenty of seed to fall out. Okay, so one thing I found very frustrating when I was looking for how to build my own bird feeder online was what to do at the top. I know it sounds simple, but it was very frustrating trying to figure out. So anyways, I'll show you what I did. I had to decide how far up to go before I tied a big knot with all four strings in order to allow room for the roof and the top to slide up, but not give it too much room to where I didn't have enough to create a loop. So do whatever seems right, but you know, you go up about eight inches from the way it comes out of the roof. Well, that's about eight inches there. Somewhere in there is going to be plenty of space for your roof to be able to slide up so you can access your jar. Then after you've tied all these, the important thing is making sure that the knot allows every string to be even or else your bird feeder will hang crooked. So once you're confident with that, I'll just show you what I did real quick. Tied all four of them into a big fat knot. That actually kind of got lucky on that one. So that works pretty slick. And then for this, I did a four strand braid. It's really easy. If you look at paracord tutorials, four strand braids are not intimidating. They're super easy to do. And then once I braided the whole thing up, braid, 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 and then I just created a loop and wrapped it with some wire. Might not look too pretty and you could probably think of a better way to do it, but I just want to show you what I figured out for myself because nothing online seemed to be helpful and that's why I stressed about how to do it myself and that's also why this one hangs a little crooked. So that's about it for tying the knot. One more thing I want to show you is just a little trick on how to fill these. Okay, so when the jar is empty and the birds have eaten all the seed, you just unscrew this, flip the whole thing upside down, do it in a place where you don't mind making a little bit of mess with bird seed. I just scoop the jar in the bird seed as full as I want and just go straight up into the jar lid there. 
Now you will create the mess when you flip this over like this. Not too bad. And then if you shake it to fill the seed cups, a ton of it will come out of the jar. So in order to save some space in the jar and keep the seed in there as long as possible, I just manually fill the seed cups to start with. That way it doesn't empty out of the jar right away before I even get it to the tree. And that's it, guys. Really happy with the way these turned out. I, I did kind of take some ideas off of the internet and wasn't really happy with the way that any of them actually worked for us. So I started just thinking outside the box and came up with this. Seems to work great and the birds love it. So that's about it. Hopefully this tutorial is helpful for you and um, maybe email us. I'll put our email down below. Take a picture of your bird feeder and some birds on it. I'd love to see some more of these around getting used. That'd be kind of cool. And that's about it. So thanks for watching our video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. As you can tell, I'm a little out of my element doing a tutorial because mostly we do vlog style recording. But hey, I wanted to share this with you. Have a great day. See you guys. The Monte Brothers. <laughs>